eight, Wichita State. And number 16, Baylor. A couple of five and one teams going at it at the Farrell Center here this afternoon in Waco. Along with former Houston standout Reed Geddes, Brooke Weisbrod with us as well. I'm Roxy Bernstein. All right, Reed, we've got the game of the day in college basketball. Wichita State, the best road team in the country, against a team that has a 46-game home non-conference winning streak in Baylor. Now, what makes this contest so cool going into it is this is strength on strength. Great point guards, Landry Shamit and Man uh, Manu Lacant. You've got two senior-dominated teams, and Roxy, the key to this game, two outstanding rebounding basketball clubs. As Wichita State has the best rebound margin in the country, they're at plus 18.2. Yeah, that's game. just ridiculous. Coming off a game where they out-rebounded Greg Marshall's team, out-rebounded the opponent by 36 <laughs> rebounds. In a game where they beat Savannah State, and Savannah State shot 55 three-pointers in the game. So I guess there were a lot of rebounds to be had. Well, and last year, Wichita State was number two in the country in rebound margin. Baylor number four. Baylor immediately in the zone. It looks like a one-three-one. It's actually a two-three. Out of bounds. Last touch by the Shockers and off of Shaquille Morris, and it belongs to the Baylor Bears. Now Baylor, coming in at number 16, lost to Xavier on Tuesday night. As Scott Drew, the all-time winningest coach in Baylor history, just recently picked up his 300th win against Alcorn State. And Greg Marshall, the winningest coach in Wichita State, who has a lot of similarities between these two programs. Good pass. And a foul will put Tristan Clark at the line for Baylor. It's on Zach Brown of Wichita State. This is the question if Zach would go today. Bothered by a knee strain, which kept him out of their win against Savannah State, but he's back in the starting lineup today. Clark just two of five at the line this season. Let's send it over to Brooke. Guys, the injury bug has really affected both teams this season. For Wichita State, there's still no clear timetable on the return of C.J. Kaiser, Marcus McDuffie, and Zach Brown. But the good news is that Landry Shamit is back in the lineup after injuring his ankle in the second half against Savannah State. For Baylor, well, they were down to seven scholarship players after T.J. Mastin broke his right hand going for a loose ball against Xavier. He had surgery on Thursdays. Doctors put him in a soft cast. He'll be in that for two weeks before he can start shooting again, and his projected return is in January. And I asked both coaches how injuries have affected their preparation for this game. Scott Giroux told me that being down to just two bigs really limits their ability to be physical in practice. And Greg Marshall said, hey, we only recruit starters here at Wichita State, so no excuses. It's next man up. Well, the interesting injury that Brooke brought up is the Mastin injury, yeah. Reed. How does that affect Baylor? Yeah, Terry Mastin was playing great, averaging 12 points, 8 rebounds, but he's a big, physical, strong kid. And when you're going against Connor Framkamp and the rest of these Shockers, you've got to be physical because they will, the reason they're so good on the boards is they hit you. They initiate that contact and not a game you want to go into without your most physical player. And a foul before the inbound pass. It's on Shaquille Morris of Wichita State. Speaking of hitting people, his first, the team's second. And for Baylor, some good news on the injury front. They'll have Tyson Jolly, who was just cleared, available to play. He'd been out because of a medical condition. He's been dealing with blood clots basically since high school. And he was just cleared, and he should be able to play for Scott Drew and Baylor and make his Bears debut today. Now, Jolly's one of those kids. He, he has been out of high school for three years and has yet to play a game. Long two missed by Tristan Clark, and it's cleared. And here comes Connor Frankham for the shot. Switching defenses man-to-man. -man. Wichita State is so good at cutting to the basket. Zach Brown a deep three. And the rebound controlled by Baylor. I'm sure that's the shot early in the shot clock that Greg Marshall wants. And an offensive foul, a charge in Manu Lacombe into the key, his first. Now, when you drive against Wichita State, they have such sound defensive principles. When you get in there, you need to jump stop. You need to hit with both feet. If you leave the ground off one foot, you're going to run over somebody. 
This ball controlled by Nuni Omot for Baylor. Tied at two, two minutes in. Lua Achiel coming off that on the ball screen was wide open for the lob. Team the tour did not see him roll into the basket. Shot clock inside 10. King McClure up and under. Fade away. Got it. King McClure has transformed his body in the offseason. He has lost some weight, and yet he is bigger and stronger in the upper body. You saw him go through contact from Connor Frankamp on that basket. And here's a zone look from Baylor as Morris missing on the baseline. And Scott Drew telling us before the ball game and shoot around this morning, they're going to mix up their defense throw through different looks at Wichita State. McClure gets the roll and a four-point lead for Baylor. You know, when I hear a coach say that, it makes me think, okay, the opponent is two things. Number one, very experienced and very well coached. You cannot give them the same look every time down the floor. The reverse by Shaq Morris. This defense, his own defense of Baylor, if you can attack in the short corner of the high post, it's not a 1-3-1, but it looks like it. And so if you split the guy on the baseline, you're playing two-on-one basketball. Leclerc off on the three. And the rebound cleared by Landry Shamit in Wichita State. Morris for three, and Wichita State with their first lead. And just Shaq Morris's fifth three-point field goal made of the season. And he has all seven for the Shockers. Nice pass by Lacombe. Will go for Tristan Clark. Clark again. And the rebound cleared by Rashard Kelly in Wichita State. Good cut. The slam from Zach Brown. Now Tristan Clark, the freshman, followed the ball with his eyes, did not jump to the ball and back, and an easy backdoor cut for Wichita State. Seven straight for the Shockers. I'm telling you, Roxy, they will cut you to death. If you don't jump to the ball and have presence of the cutter coming through the middle, it's going to be a long day defensively. Pretty floater from Manu Lacombe. <laughs> Show Kelly calling for a while. And a bounce belongs to Baylor. Early lead for Wichita State. Yeah, they are hacking inside and then knocking down three. Shaq Morris more early on. Exactly what we expected in Waco, Texas. Stay thirsty, mis amigos. go inside the play and look at Wichita State attacking this zone defense. A so freeze it right there. So you see Luau Achuil down there by himself. And the key is get the ball down on the baseline and then attack and you have a two on one to the basket. A very nice pass from Zach Brown. And we'll watch this Greg Marshall's offense attack this zone. Look for the gaps and don't necessarily try to dribble into the gaps, but pass to those gaps. Very well executed by the Shockers. And guys, I was just listening in on that Baylor huddle, and they were talking all about defensive position. Luala Chuil telling Tristan Clark to make a decision, either go out on the wing and take that player or cut off the backdoor pass, but stop letting them go backdoor. And then Scott Drew said about offense, be patient. Let's make the extra pass. Let's try to attack so we can drive and dish and really open this game back up. Uh, you know, defensively, Brooke, when anytime you see a one guard front, you want to split him up top, but then also split the one guy down on the baseline. And that's what Scott's saying is don't allow that diagonal pass because it's, suddenly we're at a disadvantage. And so really cool to listen in to the coaches as they see things and the adjustments they make in game. Another foul on Joe Luala Chuil, his first. Greg Marshall going to his bench. 
Rondo Nerger in the game as Shamit drives, rattles out. Shamit can't get the tip, and it's cleared by Tristan Clark for Baylor. Jake Lindsay brings it up for the Bears. Also in for Baylor is Mark Vidal. Coming up, maybe his best game with Baylor. 11 points and then loss at Xavier. Good defense. Clark in the key. Gets the roll off the heel of the rim. Yeah, Darren Willis played about as good a vertical defense as you could that time on Tristan Clark. And just a good, strong move by the freshman. Spaler reclaims the lead. Tie up and the arrow goes with Baylor. That's what we were talking about earlier. You don't want to dribble it, allow the trap to get there. Zach Brown is wide open. Look at this defense. I mean, that's a belly up vertical contest. And down on the other side, if you allow the trap to get there, suddenly the cross court pass is wide open. But if the trap is aggressive enough, you never can locate that player. J. Haynes Jones in for Wichita State, coming off a career high 31 in a reserve role that went against Savannah State. Jake Lindsay from deep, and the rebound raced down by Mark Battle for the Bears. And that Baylor not getting enough movement. They're throwing the ball inside, and then four perimeter players are just staring at the ball. Deflected out by Samaji Hans Jones. No, they're saying it last hit Lacan. And it goes to Wichita State. Yeah, Scott Drew is not pleased with that call. And Lacan does not seem to be protesting too much. Obviously, you cannot review this unless it's an in-game situation. Oh, yeah, he should be upset. Yeah, Lacan clearly pulled his hand back. Baylor already five offensive rebounds in this game, and that was a point of emphasis for Scott Drew the last few days to get ready for Wichita State. You know, we watched all ooh, that's a trouble. We watched all day in practice, and I'm telling you, but for 45 minutes of the hour and a half, they talked about rebounding, and, and they weren't even taking shots. The coaches just yelled, shot, and everybody would step into someone and make contact. A walk on Darrell Willis Jr. Scott Drew and his team was out rebounded by Xavier. In that game on Tuesday night, plus Xavier had 14 offensive rebounds. Out rebounded by 10, and again, that's without Terry Master, and that's what he's got to be concerned about in the game this afternoon. Considering, as we've hit on it, at Wichita State, the best rebound margin in college basketball is Jake Lindsey misses the runner. Pull up three off the mark from Samaji Haynes Jones, and then Rebound by Luala Chiwil for Baylor. Count the basket from Manula Khan and a foul going for the rebound. It's on Daryl Willis of Wichita State. Uh, Tristan Clark doing a great job of drawing in this foul. Watch the left of your screen. Watch Clark fight through that blockout. Instead of just sticking on his back, he's trying to dash down to the baseline and come back inside. And boy, you cannot just rebound and wait for the ball to come to you when you're playing these two teams. You've got to find a man, make contact, seal him, and then go get the ball. So the basket is good for Lacan. And the foul on Wichita State. So the Bears get the ball. That's the lob to Luel Archuil. Lacan off the inbound. Rattles out three. But Clark, the putback by Tristan Clark, who has six already. Oh, how good has the freshman been starting this game? He averages just six and a half points per game. And he's trying to pick up the slack in the absence yeah. of Mastin. Well, and the coaches told us in practice yesterday for Clark, the question really is confidence. Well, can't start the game much more confident than he has. Austin Reeves at corner three. An outstanding shooter, Austin Reeves. He was labeled by the Baylor coaches as an MD player, which means make drive. Do not let him catch and shoot. Lacombe. though by Vital 
But a foul called against Baylor. This is a fun one, Reed. They're going up and down. It's physical, too. Uh, everything that we hope for. Look at this block. Milo gets it. Well, a lot of heels there. Never going to be any easy. Got the big win last night against Creighton at the Kennel. And then an old Big East yeah. rivalry between Syracuse and UConn. Uh, UConn struggling a little bit. They need to get it going. And uh, right now, early in the season, both Greg Marshall, Scott Drew have got to be very pleased with the way their team's playing going into the month of December. One more for Daryl Willis Jr., just a 59% foul shooter for the senior from Madison, Wisconsin. And strange to say UConn now a conference foe of Wichita yeah. State, but the Shockers moving to the American. Now, what an addition to that conference. You've got Cincinnati up at the top and Central Florida playing good basketball. And uh, Don't sleep on the Houston Cougars this year. They got a chance to jump up and beat some people they're not supposed to. Why am I not surprised you brought up the Houston Cougars? It just popped into my mind. <laughs> it's I amazing saw, how I that saw works. Jimmy Valvano running across the court hugging everybody. And you know, not again. Had this flashback that I hadn't thought about all day. <laughs> Shot clock at five. Good defense. McClure, a three. Tipped out of bounds by Jake Lindsay. It belongs to Wichita State. The reason these teams rebound so well is rebounding effort. Jake Lindsay was outside the three-point line on the opposite side of the floor from where he got his hand on that ball. And you and I talked about rebounding was going to be a key to this game. Right now, Baylor dominating the boards. That's not almost seven. That would have been seventh offensive rebound of this game for the Bears. Turn around on the baseline and Shaq Morris the miss. Loose diving is Lindsay and he gets a timeout before he's tied up by Rashard Kelly and a timeout for Baylor. Inside ten and a half to go first half and Waco a four point lead for number 16 Baylor. Seventeen thirteen, number sixteen Baylor leads number eight Wichita State. Ten twenty nine to go here in the first half. So a thirty second timeout taken by Baylor to save the possession. As let's send it over to Brooke. Hey guys, I was just listening into the Wichita State huddle and a lot of advice for Samaje Haynes Jones to stick with Manu Lacant, jersey to jersey, to stop cheating up the lanes, to try to get the steal and also to stay in rebounding position. Greg Marshall very concerned about the number of offensive rebounds from Baylor. Yeah, that's just not typical for a Wichita State team. And as Brooke talks about, I bet every huddle until those numbers flip, they're gonna talk about keeping Baylor off of the offensive glass. I have a feeling that that's a conversation that's gonna be running in both huddles all day. Yeah. Considering how much emphasis both teams put on rebounding as Connor Frank camp hits a three Boy, That is a big shot with not much room from deep on the floor for Connor Frank camp So with that three Frank camp has now made a three in 29 consecutive games which ties a Wichita State school record which was recently set by Landry Shamit breaking Ron Baker's record that breaks or ties a record that's been in existence for about a week yeah. now <laughs> So glad you held it for yeah, me. Yeah, that's right. Good, to the basket, King McClure the land. Yeah, weak side defense just non-existent right now for the Shockers. That ball started in the dead corner, and nobody on the weak side, even in the midline, much less rotating. Deflected out is Jake Lindsay getting his hands in there. And it's a Wichita State ball. Greg Marshall running out low to the right of your screen. You don't see any black shirts rotating over at all. And especially with the restricted arc down there, you can't just rotate to the midline. You've got to get outside of that arc to provide weak side defense. Tyson Jolly making his Baylor debut, the redshirt freshman from Oklahoma City, who was just medically cleared to play for Baylor after dealing with the medical condition. He had one thought to go back to high school. That's what he's been dealing with and was just medically cleared to even get contact in the last couple of days. As Frank Camp off on a trip. When you say just cleared, like maybe an hour ago, <laughs> he was at practice and coaches told us they weren't sure he was going to be released to contact. And here he is in the game getting minutes. Three off the mark from the wall at Trill. It's cleared by the Shockers, but Tyson Jolly getting his first minutes with Baylor. And 
he's really excited to play as Fred Camp buries his second three. Adjustment by Greg Marshall and Connor Framkamp. He is now being more aggressive, looking for his shot, and I believe he's taken the last three shots down the floor. And boy, what range this kid has. He's been a little banged up. Took a shot to his thigh the other day in that win against Savannah State. And here is Jolly. I, I could see that excitement in his face and just in his eye now that he's getting a chance to play because it's been a long struggle to get back out on the floor. Tough fadeaway on the baseline as King McClure the miss the rebound run on Nerger for Wichita State. A nice box out that time by Nerger on the weak side. In the lane, rattles in and popped out, but who touched it? No basket and offensive goaltend. Well, how does that happen? How do you hit up under the ball after it's past the rim? And Greg Marshall saying, are you kidding me? You see defensive guys do that. I'm not sure I've ever seen an offensive player jump up through the net and block a shot. Look at this basket. What a strange play in Waco, Texas. Number eight, Wichita State, and number 16, Baylor. Knotted at 19, 7.49 to go first half. Two teams playing at a high level here in early December. And Reed, this has a feel almost of a Sweet 16 type of game, doesn't it? You know, it's funny. You, you said that. I'm thinking, how cool is it to hear a game you're calling in December described that way? Two ranked teams playing at a very high level, and you're exactly right. This, this very much has an NCAA tournament feel. Wichita State, the best road team in college basketball since the start of the 2013-14 season. 41 road wins. They have a winning percentage on the road of 872. As Matty LeCount gives Baylor the lead again. A really good set coming out of that timeout. A double screen running baseline. So that's exactly how it was for Wichita State. Pound that ball into big Shaq Morris. Nine for Shaq. It's a one-point lead for the Bears, and Wichita State has won six straight road games. On the other side, Baylor has a 46-game consecutive home non-conference winning streak, which is the second longest in the country to Duke. Corner three off the mark from Omont. Interesting, those on-the-ball screens aren't really screens. Baylor right now slipping every on-the-ball screen, looking for a slip out to the corner and pick him up. Connor Frankamp is feeling it. Three threes for the senior, the transfer from Kansas. Yeah, if you're guarding the man that sets the on-the-ball screen on Connor Frankamp, you better step out and get a hand up. And he's been struggling shooting the ball this season, which is his bread and butter, but he's starting to come around. Jolly trying for the lob and the miscommunication there with Nudi Omar. He's almost ready to come over the top of this screen, take one power dribble. He's got LeConte on his back, and boy, that's Luau Atuillo. You gotta step up and put a hand up, and if you're not contesting Connor Frankamp, you did not pay attention during the scouting report. Five straight for Wichita State to reclaim the lead. Morris with the left hand. And a foul to follow as Darrell Willis to the line. Oh, I'm telling you, this is grown man basketball when the ball gets up on the rim. Darrell Willis Jr. was up at the, almost the top of the key. And look at the rebounding effort. He comes straight down. Look at the make contact. See, he leaned in to Tristan Clark. He had his right forearm in the middle of Clark's chest and just literally moved him out of the lane. First on duty. Willis 1-2 at the line. Side spin to his shot. His game is not finesse, it's power. Watch this right forearm. Watch, he puts it on Tristan Clark and just clears him out. And that's what the Baylor coaches are talking about. They're going to hit you. They're going to hit you and initiate the contact, and you need to be ready for it. Wichita State has equaled their largest lead. Full court press coming off the Bay Free Throw, not just a total pressure. Defense by Shannon. Oh, 
Seven to shoot. Here's Manu Lacombe. Long three. Rips off of the rebound. Shaq Morris and the Shockers. It was a lot of work for a 30-foot jump shot. Frank Hamp. Trying to pull up, and here comes Baylor and King McClure. Quarter three. Nune Oman ties the game. If Baylor can knock down that corner three, he is going to make Manu Lacan very difficult to defend. Just Clark the rebound. Tied with five minutes to go in the first half. Oh, no. Left handed behind the back step back. Manu Lacan is feeling it in pretty good defense by Landry Shannon. Last year's Big 12 newcomer of the year with 12. As Baylor seesaws back on top. And a foul called against Luol Achuil, his second. Watch this step back by Amanda. Boy, that is beautiful with the left hand step back. And here's the kick out. And this is what makes him difficult is that if you have to collapse the defense, if you can't keep him in front of you and you collapse the defense and Baylor is knocking down that kick out shot, and that's tough to defend. Lacombe with 12 to lead Baylor. The transfer from Miami, native of Belgium. You can watch a lot of college basketball partner and not see more seniors on the court. Seven out of the ten seniors are starters, and not just fourth-year seniors. We're talking about redshirt seniors, so kids that have been playing college basketball for five years now, including Manu Lacombe. Having experienced guards, oh. veterans. Don't get rattled. You understand where to go and why to go, what's going to open up, and then also the level of detail that coaches can go into on scouting reports. Whole different ball game when you've got this kind of experience. Here's the call. Shannon for Wichita State, and a foul in the backcourt, and it's on Tristan Clark of Baylor, his first. Sunday at 4 Eastern on ESPN, it's the 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Number one, UConn takes on number three, Notre Dame at the XL Center in Hartford. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. The Huskies have played in and won the Jimmy V Women's Classic each of the last six years, and Another great matchup, UConn and Notre Dame. Seems like this November and December, we're going to have better college basketball games, both men and women, than I remember in a long time. Here's her shot rejected by Tristan Clark. Chased down by Richard Kelly. Lewis, here comes Baylor. Mark Vidal attacks to the basket. The hammer roll for Vidal. That's that senior leadership. So Vidal makes this incredible move. The crowd gets loud. He comes down in transition. He's patient. He waits for the trailing screen. Knocks down a three and sits everybody down. So the third year sophomore. Shannon with his first points. And a shot that deflated the crowd, which was loud here at the Farrell Center. Now an offensive foul on Baylor and a turnover. We're going back and forth. As yeah, as athletic as anybody on this Baylor roster, and then immediately Landry Shaman answers, waits for it, and knocks down a thing. Let it be. Our first game, number four, Villanova against number 15, Gonzaga at 7 Eastern. Then Old Big East rivals were off Syracuse and UConn. Both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app. Tight one in Waco, number eight, Wichita State, clinging to a one-point lead on number 16, Baylor. And a great non-conference yeah, matchup. Buddy. And we, we don't see many of these in terms of the home-and-home -home between teams 
in the top 25 of the non-conference. Well, I mean, that's been the problem for Wichita State, right? They, 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 what they've done in the last decade, there aren't many teams that want to do home and homes with them. Big 12 this year has been an exception. They'll play three Big 12 teams out of their next four games. After Baylor, they've got Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Whistle off the ball and a foul. And it's an illegal screen called a Landry Shaman, his first. Well, that's a new point of emphasis. For officials are going to allow your feet to be a little bit wider than they were last year. You can go outside your shoulders, but in exchange, you can't lean at all or they're going to pop. You know, interesting, uh, Baylor, the first eight minutes of this game, had six offensive rebounds. Brooke told us about the huddle with Greg Marshall where he said, hey, no more offensive rebounds. Since then, the next nine minutes, zero offensive rebounds for the Bulls. Walled off by Morris. Shot clock to take 18 to Baylor's 29 to the paint. King McClure, fade away, and the rebound chased down by Austin Reeves. Reeves, who made his first career start, and then went over Savannah State with Zach Brown out of the line. Yeah, from Wichita State, I'm getting that ball inside the shaft. Broken up. Good anticipation from Tristan Clark as Reeves trying to feed Ron O'Neill. Scott Drew right now has Mooney Omad, who's 6'9", down there guarding Shaq Morris, who's 6'8", but body types, that's a mismatch. That's advantage Shaq Morris. Not many uh, people could match up physically with Shaq Morris. Well, and immediately Scott Drew turns around and he gets Mark Vidal in there, who has a similar body type. Nice adjustment by Scott Drew. Nurser. And the rebound, Tristan Clark for Baylor. He tells him, if I'm Baylor, Tristan Clark was great the first three minutes of this game, and I'm not sure he's touched the ball since then. Cut off by Morris, but a foul. That's two on Shaq Morris with a minute 50 left in the half. Now, if you're Scott Drew, you don't necessarily want to get the ball to Tristan Clark because he has to step out. Scott Drew would rather him duck in like Shaq does on the other side. So duck in, get low, and then turn and seal the defender on your back. Sounds easy, Shaq Morris, the guy you're trying to step into. It. Like, you go step into the side of that wall. It's 6 8 2 80. McComb. A kick out. Jake Lindsay thought about it. Scott Drew's trying to get Lindsay to shoot the ball more. He passed what? A good look open. He passed it up. And Scott Lindsay's role as a passer, distributor, 26 assists to just two turnovers for the season. Off balance, Shannon can't get it to go. Oh, Saved by back. Zach Brown. And then a block is called on Wichita State and Rashard Kelly. Holy cow, the effort by Zach Brown with a knee brace on. Yeah, they are just so relentless going to the glass. Both teams, they play so hard. Oh, man, well, watch this to the right of your screen and watch Zach Brown go after this rebound. It's rebounding effort. You know, partner, the, 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 the old axiom is you don't get 100% of the rebounds you don't go for. And so you've got to go after every rebound. No matter where you are on the floor, you've got to dive and crash to the basket. And both these teams do that so well. The shot not taken is the bucket not scored. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the one I liked a little bit more. I didn't like to rebound very much. Good defense. Tristan Clark, the air ball. Great rotation by Rashard Kelly. One point game, final minute of the first half. It's been over two and a half minutes without a field goal from either side. Willis. Jake Lindsay not looking for his shot enough. Perhaps Landry Shaman doesn't look enough. He is an elite level shooter. 57% from the floor, 50 from the free throw line, and 94% from the free throw line. Just 14 points per game. Most of the time, people just try for 
50 for the field, 40 from three, and 80 from the line. That's right, 50, 50, 90 club? Well, that, that is a rare club. <laughs> Lindsay on the drive, swatted by Darrell Willis. Frank Camp from just inside mid-card, it's off the mark. And Wichita State has their largest lead of the afternoon. Four-point lead at the break. Yeah, great first half of basketball. Well played, clean, exactly what we anticipated from these two teams. 33-29. I really think Greg Marshall should let his emotions out from time to time, but his team leads 33-29. <laughs> Getting ready to start the second half along with Reed Geddes, Brooke Weisbrod, and the Baylor Bear has joined us courtside. Roxy Bernstein with you. And a fun first half, yeah. but the difference is a three-point shooting read for Wichita State, 7 of 11 from downtown. Yeah, and maybe specifically Connor Frankham. He came back in, on, into the game for Greg Marshall's team and was very aggressive looking for his shot. He made three three-point field goals in the first half. And as a team, yeah, the Shockers just scorched from behind the line. They were 7 for 11, shooting 64. the key to the first half for Wichita State. And Wichita State, four of 17 inside the arc in the first half. And they're usually a team that pounds it around the basket with Shaq Morris and getting guys involved around the hoop. They only had eight points in the paint in the first half, the Shockers. Yeah, plus 10 for Baylor Bears over Greg Marshall's team. And we did not expect that. Plus 10 points in the paint for the Bears in the first half. Let's send it over to Brooke. Hey guys, just real quick, obviously from Baylor, two big points of emphasis, keep rebounding and defend the three-point line. Wichita State's so confident shooting those threes, so for Baylor, it's about pressuring their guards and making sure there's no easy entry passes to the wing and definitely no more wide-open threes. When we talked about the terminology book they use, MD, and that means must drive, and right now, there are a lot of must drive players for Wichita State. The up and under from Landry Shamit. Who has eight? Shaq Morris and Connor Frankham leading Wichita State with nine apiece. Manu Lacombe of Baylor leads all scorers with 12. As good as Lacombe was in the first half, Frank Baylor, I'm making an emphasis going inside the paint. Yeah, here in the second half. Tristan Clark couldn't handle it. And it's out of bounds to Baylor, but the largest lead for the Shockers. Well, Landry Shamit has an elite level float game. He shoots them with one hand where he comes in and goes off one foot, and he also does it off two feet. But he shoots a floater over defenders about as well as anybody in America. King McClure can't get it to go with the rebound. Rashard Kelly and the Shockers. Foul, it's on Tristan Clark, his second. Well, Baylor just not playing very efficiently. They only had three assists on 12 made field goals for Scott Drew's Bears. And on the other end, boy, Greg Marshall's team very efficient. They had eight assists on 11 made field goals right now. A lot of dribbling and one on one plays by Baylor. Keep in mind, Baylor with only eight scholarship players available, including Tyson Jolly, who was just cleared and made his Baylor debut in the first half of this game. Greg Marshall talked to Brooke about that going into the locker room. We need to make Manu Lacombe more tired. We need to make him work harder, and maybe the heat right now in Waco will have an impact. Stays with Baylor. Actually, three fouls on Clark, not two. But there is Jolly, who was just medically cleared literally hours before this game. And Scott Drew throwing them out there. They need bodies, losing. Terry Mastin to the broken right hand. Just at Xavier earlier this week. Won't go for Luol Atuil. Great rebound. L losing Terry Mastin on a team that was already very thin to begin with. They're so thin that they just took a walk on from the football team because they needed another body. And a foul to put Joe Luol Atuil at the line. 
Well, we walked into the gym yesterday for Baylor's practice. It was one of those situations where you have managers out there trying to simulate <laughs> Wichita State. That is a bad simulation if you're trying to get ready to play the Shockers. Fallon Willis, his second. Joe Luala Chuil, born in the South Sudan. His dad was a politician. He bounced around. MVP recently in that Hall of Fame Classic where a couple weeks ago where Baylor beat Wisconsin at Creighton. No, average 17 and 13 in both those games. Creighton game, he was outstanding. 15 points and 15 rebounds. Another one of those development kids for Scott Drew. He comes in and you look at him and you think, I'm not sure that kid can really play. You see Jerome Tang there to the left of Scott Drew. And they have historically done such a good job of developing under recruited kids. Alvin Brooks there in the picture as well. John Jacobs to his right. John Jacobs just coming over from Gonzaga. Here to the staff in May. Now a zone look from Baylor. With the left hand, Rashard Kelly's first points of the ball game. Wichita State's got this great set where they put a guard at the free throw line in the middle of that zone. And whether it's Shamit or Connor Franklin, if they get the ball to the free throw line, such good decision making. And a steal for Zach Brown. Good ball reversal. Morris. Can't get the jump hook and the rebound, Tristan Clark. Here comes Bailey. And a kick on Landry Sham, and it stays with the Bears. Now, watch this free throw line attack. And again, you see a guard right there in the middle. And a lot of times they run Fran Camp in there, too. But then, in, you know, we saw in the first half, there was a two-on-one two on down there. That turns it into a three-on-two right at the basket. It's a really good set. Luala Chawil, the reverse underneath. And the seven-footer with his first field goal of the game. Outside shooting of Wichita State, the inside scoring of the Baylor Bears. Shamit from the corner, hits a three as he falls into the bench. Marshall wants a foul on a four-point play, and Shamit leaned back and kicked his leg out and drew contact as the Baylor player contested on a jump pass. Eight threes for the Shockers in Wichita State, their largest lead. out of bounds by Richard Kelly. It stays with Baylor and a fresh shot clock for the Bears. But Wichita State has opened up their largest lead of the ball game. Now watch this three-pointer. Boy, they're just shooting so well. Kicks that leg. That could have been a four-point play. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Taco Bell. Try the tasty rolled chicken tacos back for a limited time. College football playoff selection show tomorrow at noon on ESPN. What does that look like? Well, you, you know, I didn't set out to do that. Again, you, you saw me probably the first game I ever coached as a youngster, uh, 34 years old at Winthrop University. You just have to do what's natural. And this is me. I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of passion. I had to overcome a lack of talent with working hard as a, as a player. And I try to do that as a coach and instill that in my team. Coach, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Good to see you. That's great stuff, is Greg Marshall taking you behind the curtain and going into detail about he lets his emotions and his energy out there for on display for everybody to see. That's why it works so good to have such a veteran team, because it's a situation where you have to have focused listening, and no matter the volume of which the message is being delivered, you have to hear the substance of what he's saying. Offensive rebound by Mark Vidal coming out of that timeout. Do you know what I mean? A lot of times, you, somebody with that much energy, you just hear a noise. You don't really hear the message. Poked away by Luol Achuel. 
Lacombe. Achuil in the lane. And Luol Achuil pulls Baylor within three. Bears had six points since halftime, all from Joe Luol Achuil, who was scoreless in the first half. Frankham, long three. Hit another one. Four threes for Connor Frankham. Listen, Baylor, you got to adjust to this kid. If you're defending, that time it was Tristan Clark. If you're defending this screener, you have got to step up and push him back two more steps. Well, he is killing Baylor right now. Nine of 13, the Shockers from downtown. And one counted for Joe Luol on 12. He is all eight now for Baylor in the second half. Tristan Clark over and was talking to him about that. And well, this is a move you don't see often from the big fella. A pick and roll dive into the basket. And a little athleticism from Luol Achuel. I take it back. I shortchanged Mark Vidal as a hoop for Baylor since halftime. But Achuel, Luol Achuel with eight of Baylor's ten. Four point game. Country's best road team since started 2013-2014, Wichita State. 41 and 6 on the road against Baylor, who has the second longest active home court non-conference winning streak. They have won 46 consecutive home non-conference games. The last time they lost a home non-conference game was December of 2012 against Northwestern. inside by Shaq Morris. If you're going to try to draw an offensive foul, you have to fall the direction you were hit. <laughs> Luol Altuil was hit, and if he'd have fallen straight back, it would have been a charge. Instead, he fell to the right. Yeah, you know, but that's the body from Shaq Morris. Hey, man, hey, if he's about to hit me, I'm falling too. Lacan has a good look, and Vidal the offensive rebound. And one for Mark Vidal. You were talking about Reed. It's a man's game inside. He is holding off the defensive player with his left form. Watch his left form. He is sealing and rebounding flat-footed with one hand. Now, I'm telling you, it is a full contact game down inside right now. Well, how good is Vital Bear? He's been terrific. Yeah, he sure has been. Bring your hard hat and lunch pail to this one. Don't, don't shy away. You're going to get hit. And he deadens it off the heel of the rim of the board and rolls in for Mark Vidal, who gets a three-point play. Third foul on Zach Brown and Baylor within three. Rano Nerzer checks in for the Shockers. Shaq Morris traveled. And now the first one I didn't think was a charge. That one. Well, I don't know. Boy, he's got a position. He rolls his shoulder, and you see that left arm. It's a good call to look at the feet before the contact. And, boy, Greg Marshall, he went up, and he was yelling at Shaq. And it's exactly right. You shuffled before the contact. A good call from John Higgins right on top of the play. Good crew work in this one in Waco today. Number eight, Wichita State. Number 16, Baylor. Mark Vidal gets his own miss. Well, they're calling a baby Rico around here, and he's playing like Rico gathers. You know who he reminds me of is Deontay Burton that played at Iowa State. Kind of the same body type and explosiveness. And, you know, Rico gathers is a fun comparison, but Rico didn't have that kind of offensive game that Mark Vidal brings to the Bears. He's been so aggressive in this game. Two of two at the line, eight points for Vidal. He got a shot. And Vidal, one of the guys trying to help pick up the slack in the absence of Terry Mastin. Nerzer the rebound. And it's a two-point game. 13-20 to go, and there is Mastin, who was injured on Tuesday night in Cincinnati against Xavier. Good pass. And one 
for Shaq Morris, and you're right, what a feed from Landry Shamit. Landry Shamit just kept dribbling. Morris stepped in, sealed the defense, but look at the effort to create a passing angle on this post-entry pass. Look how high Shaq Morris walked the defensive player up. He took him from the post, had him all the way outside the free throw line. All right, that is a load. When he moves you up like that, you better come from the weak side. And the rebound, Jake Lindsay, but Tristan Clark out there on the floor playing with four fouls, approaching 13 minutes to go. The wall on Chewell missing the elbow jumper. Vital as it knocked away. Samaji Haynes Jones speeds up the floor and a foul on Jake Lindsay of Baylor. Jake Lindsay knocked knees with Haynes Jones as he went by. And Haynes Jones kind of the, part of the walking wounded for Wichita State. Even though he scored 31 off the bench against Savannah State Tuesday in Wichita, he was hit in the mouth. People thought he lost teeth. There was a lot of blood, but it didn't slow him down because he set an unofficial Wichita State reserve record with 31 points in the win. You know what you do as a coach when you see that? So let him hit that ball. Just <laughs> pack little balls in there. And get it might have helped there. you, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, he has four three-point field goals made in that game. It only made one in the previous five games and four of six from behind the three-point line for Samaje. James Jones in that game. The officials are at the monitor checking to see if there's a possible elbow on the play. And I don't see no. anything there with, that would warrant the flagrant one to be assessed. 47-43, number eight Wichita State leads number 16 Baylor. As Wichita State looking for their first road win over a top 25 team since February of 2012 when they blew out Creighton in Omaha. Everything we could have hoped for. And then some. And then some. Man. Scheduling people give us more games like this in December. And this is great for both programs in terms of an RPI game that will help them come selection Sunday. And the strength of Shakur Morris. And the poise. I mean, he takes three dribbles with his left hand, gets in position, and then turns back over that left shoulder. Not much you can do. Good pass. And a slam plus one for Luol Achuel. Uh, one of the rare times that Baylor has gotten an easy shot as a result of their offensive set. Luol Achuel started up at the top, set an on-the-ball screen for Jake Lindsay, and then dove to the opposite block. Baylor needs more of that. They need more baskets that are as a result of their system and not just one-on-one -on -one plays. He was scoreless at halftime. I want to know what Scott Drew told him at the break because the wall out tool has come out inspired here in the second half. He has 11. Vital with six, and they have all 17 for Baylor since the break. The senior from Estonia. As twice we've seen Wichita State post player grab the ball and dribble into the post and just have one-on-one -on -one coverage. <laughs> Lindsay to the basket, and he left it short. Hayes Jones up the floor. Play didn't force it. Can't get the roll. Rado Nurser cleans it up for the Shockers. Nurser suddenly really active after that made jump hook and great offensive rebound. Forcing Scott Drew to call a timeout as Wichita State has opened up a seven point lead. Uh, it was all three points shooting in the first half, and now the Shockers attacking the paint with their big guys.
gifts crafted. But get knowing. Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN. It's the 16th annual Jimmy B Women's Classic presented by Corona. Number one, UConn takes on number three, Notre Dame at the XL Center in Hartford. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. 53-46, Baylor trailing Wichita State. 11-15 to play is... Let's send it over to Brooks. She was in the huddle with Scott Drew and Baylor. Yeah, guys, Scott Drew talking about keeping Wichita State off balance. He said they scored on us when we're in man, so guess what we're going to do? We're going to change defenses. I don't care if we foul out, but let's go all out. Take a charge in the paint. You guys, what you'll see from Baylor on defense is a different look whether Wichita State scores or if they don't. And a foul on Rashard Kelly of Wichita State and Omont to the line. Yeah. Yeah, Brooke, that's exactly what we were talking about. They focused on the three-point shot in the first half, and now they're getting dominated inside. Baylor's got to make that adjustment. Scott Drew talking to his guys about it. Okay, guys. The what are we on this? What are we on this? What are we on this? All right, everybody got it. And Let's have a the layup. We're back in 11, though. Jake makes the layup. We're back in 11. I think they're trying to get across they need to cover number 11. Yeah, no matter whether you're in a 12, a zone, or an 11, whether you're in a man-to-man -man defense, you better find number 11. He is having an outstanding game right now. Scott Drew's got to make some adjustments because Landry Shaman has been great. 11 points, he has six assists and just one turnover, and perfect from the three-point line, three for three. Well, Landry Shaman is having himself a game. Uni Omont makes both free throws to cut the Wichita State lead to five. Wichita State, 9 of 13 for the floor in the second half. 49% for the game, and overall, they're 9 of 13 from three in this one. Nice job extending that defense on Connor Franke. Shot clock down to five. There is Shaman. And he misses from the baseline. Out of bounds, last touch by Darrell Willis Jr. belongs to Baylor. Yeah, a really good defensive possession. Scott Drew wants over the back, and I agree, the officials, he went over the back, he just didn't go on the back. You know, there was no He contact. went up and over. Yeah, that's right. Wichita State, Willis to the basket, draws the foul and one. How about that play by Daryl Willis, extending the pressure out about 35 feet from the basket, dives on the floor, picks up the loose ball, and then converts through contact. And that was Rashard Kelly that dove on the floor. Now look at the shoulder, lean in and put that ball way out on the left hand to create distance from Luala Chuil. Third, third foul, Luala Chuil. Oh, Willis now four of seven at the line. What a great play by Darrell Willis Jr. Wichita State has matched their largest lead midway through the second half. from behind the line for the season. And yet that was just his ninth make. Rado Nurser inside. Willis underneath and a foul. The second on Nuni Omat. And how good has Willis been? And the energy that he has brought. There's too much dribbling, but a nice job by King McClure of knocking it down. And then again on the other end, we seem to be calling Daryl Willis's name a lot. And watch him fight for this rebound. 
you had better bring energy if you play for Greg Marshall, because if you don't, you're not playing for Greg Marshall. Hey. Hey. Willis is an interesting guy for Greg Marshall's team. He shoots a really high percentage from the three-point line. He's five for ten, and yet only a 59% free throw shooter. Two in the rebound, Mark Vidal has had an active second half for Baylor. And a foul, count the basket and one, the strength of King McClure that time. We saw it in the first half. His upper body strength is so much improved that he's not only able to play through the contact, he is able to complete a shot through contact. And that's a nice play by Keem McCoy. You know, he turned down an easier drive. He came off that double screen, and instead of dipping his left shoulder and going, he stopped, waited. Connor Frankamp realigned in front of him, and then he went out. First on Frankamp. McClure a chance to make this a two-point game. And he has 12, along with LeConte, to lead Baylor. And LeConte has not scored here in the second half. Willis on the baseline in the deep two. That's what I'm talking about. Willis is such a good spot-up shooter. He's a catch-and-shoot guy in the half court, and yet when he's standing at the free-throw line, he has struggled. Maybe he should just catch-and-shoot yeah, at the free-throw line. Just have the ref throw it to him <laughs> instead of hand it to him. The corner short from the blur, but the offensive rebound. Vidal has it set back, and it's controlled by Landry Shaman. Great ball reversal. Reflected out and going tumbling into the crowd was Nuni Omont. Getting to know some of the fans. <laughs> <laughs> nice catch by the fan. The front row wants a hand. I believe that's Chip Gaines of the Magnolia Market who caught the. Who caught. He took a charge. Yeah, he did. Held his ground, stood in there. That's Carol Dawson sitting to his left. That is Chip Gaines general, from the show Fixer yeah, Upper. He's a longtime general manager of the Houston Rockets sitting next to him, a former coach here at Baylor back in the 70s. Carol Dawson's a legend here in these parts. Well, Chip Gaines may be considered a legend as well. <laughs> Off of Shaq Morris, and Greg Marshall can't believe it. <laughs> Coaching anger. <laughs> a controlled anger. A controlled. Uh, Higgins, nice piece of officiating. Just let that go. Of course, Greg Marshall, one of the more animated coaches and entertaining coaches watching yeah. him on the sideline in college hoops. Yeah, and personally. Very likable guy. Yeah, he's saying, how about that on this end, that same play that you allowed the contact and gave the ball, and then back down on the left side, you call the foul. Here's the play that got him upset. And, uh, Greg Marshall, plenty of the championship tonight between number one Clemson and number seven Miami. A spot possibly on the line of the college football playoff for Dabo Swinney and maybe for the turnover chain in the U. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and live on the ESPN app. There are your top six in the college football playoff in Oklahoma handling TCU in the Big 12 championship game right now. I dig the turnover chain. Uh, no doubt. You know, it's interesting. I was watching game day before we came over to the arena and seeing Nick Saban in a suit and tie on this day of conference championships certainly looked out of place. Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears. Tight one with number eight, Wichita State. Joe Luol Achuil with all 12 points since halftime. That's a nice looking release by the seven foot senior. 
Hey guys, just listening in on the Wichita State huddle, it was very intense. Greg Marshall obviously having an intense conversation with the officials. But really the big point of emphasis, Richard Kelly said, hey guys, don't play the clock, play to win. Is there ever a time that Greg Marshall's not intense? <laughs> and a steal for Baylor. Luan Chewil goes baseline. He stepped on the end line. You see, that's the difficulty of when you have Shaq Morris guarding you and you have a frame like Luan Chewil, you've got to step out to get the ball. And uh, Gr Greg Marshall watching his center just dislodge Baylor's post player. And, well, it's hard to get a basket in the paint when Shaq Morris is guarding you. So the newcomers to the American. Wichita State to reach in foul on Jake Lindsay, his second, leading here in Big 12 country. Just over seven minutes to go. Wichita State will get a one and one, and Frank Camp to the line. It's the seventh Baylor team. Interesting, kind of Frank Camp. This is only his third free throw attempt of the season. Just two for two coming into this game. Wichita State is an outstanding free throw shooting team. There are all five starters shoot 80% for a And as a team, they shoot 79%. And well, for Greg Marshall, that will win you some basketball games. And here's what's still to come. They already lost to Notre Dame at the Maui Gym Maui Invitational Championship game. But at Oklahoma State, been hosting Oklahoma. Some interesting non-conference yeah. games coming up for the Shockers. Well, if you like watching Shamit and Lakonto against each other, how about Shamit and Young? Trey Young. Trey Young in Oklahoma. <laughs> Dynamic <laughs> freshman for the Sooners. Are you kidding me? I got to see him at the PK-80 last week at a Portland, and he is sensational. And Ula Khan, out of bounds. Not sure if that was a pass or a shot. He's saying it was tipped out of bounds. Now, he threw that off the bottom of the backboard. I don't think anyone for Wichita State got a piece of it. Let's take a look at it and see as he goes baseline. I think he just throws it up on the backboard. He's not arguing. Shaq Morris, he got it back. And everybody on the glass for Baylor, Mark Vital controls. Shaq Morris does not miss many shots when he can duck in and get that close to the rim. And Vital will head to the line. And he's clutching that ankle, and Baylor cannot afford to lose anyone else. With eight, really seven and a half scholarship players right now, considering that Tyson Jolly was just medically cleared. And he's trying to walk it off. We talked about Terry Maston out with a broken hand. Scott Drew lost two or three players to medical conditions and two transfers. Watch his right ankle bend down. Oh, yeah. When you have 280 pounds coming down that foot like that. Shots. Vital having a little bit of a coming out party here this afternoon. A two or four in the line of freshman for Blake Charles. He's here. Coming off the career high 11 against Xavier on Tuesday. He has eight. And this one keeps those heels stuck to the ground on free throws. If I'm Scott Drew, I'm saying, hey, freshman, come up on your toes and extend your body through that shot. Easy for you to say after Shaq Morris just came yeah, down on his foot. Yeah, you come up on your terms. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Let me know how that turns out. Good defense. Shot clock inside 10. Frank Camp, the floater. Offensive rebound, Daryl Willis, and a fresh shot clock for the Shockers. And a steal for Mark Vidal. They were doing a better job taking away the high post entry pass in that zone defense. Here's LeConte matched up with Shannon. who is scoreless since halftime. And the rebound falls.
to Zach Brown in Wichita State. Great defense on that play. Brandcamp drops it off. Darrell Willis the stuff. That's twice now we've seen Baylor close out too hard on Connor Frankett, which you have to the way he's been shooting for Greg Marshall's team. But twice now we've seen him look up, lift his eyes to the rim, and then put that ball on the floor. First, the defense by the Shockers, and well, they've done a great job and leads down to the other end, and that's Connor Frankamp attacking that zone off the dribble. Inside five minutes to go. Scott Drew rolled the dice, bringing Tristan Clark back with his four fouls. It's vital. We'll check out. There's guys who close out on his kind of a long closeout. That's a shooter who goes all the way to him. Some guys you can do a short closeout. No other has got the ball. You've got to close out all the way. Step back three. First points of the second half for Manu Lacan. the Wichita State lead at half. Deflected and taken away by King McClure. And a turnover. Now that's a good no call. That time Willis had pressure on Noel Achuil. And then as the ball was in the air, he just released the pressure by pulling a chair out from under somebody as they try to sit down. Attention at the Hero World Challenge. Sports Center at midnight Eastern with SVP also available on the ESPN app. Well, Baylor, their streak is on the line. As the Bears have won 46 consecutive home ball games against non-conference opponents. And they're taking on the best road team in the country since the start of the 2013-2014 season in Wichita State. It's been a tight game all day here in Waco. Uh, nice adjustments by both coaches. Baylor's done a good job taking away the three-point shot last 12 minutes. Wichita State has only taken one three-point field goal of the team. Still shooting 69%. Shot clock at five. Fran Camp steps out to the corner. King McClure and Baylor. Very, very deliberate in the half court. Boy, Tristan Clark was up. With contact and one for Jake Lindsay and a chance to tie the game with 3.10 to go. An athletic play by Jake Lindsay. Watch the hang time. He comes right into your living room. Draws the contact and then watch him pull the ball back, hangs and able to complete it. And what a nice play by Lindsay. Four fouls on Shaq Morris, who checks out. First points of the day for Jake Lindsay, who's two and four at the line this season. Good timing, too, for Jake Lindsay to score. As a three-point shooter, he shot 40% last season, but he's only taken seven attempts this year. Coach Drew said, hey, can you tell him to shoot for him, He's such a great facilitator. We're hoping in this game when he sees there's no T.J. Maston to pass to, he'll decide to take the shot. I put first tie since it was 27 all with four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Wichita State reclaims the lead. Now you see Jake Lindsay turn and put his palms up. He cannot take away the wing at the free throw line extended and throws out quick enough on Connor Franken. Somebody else has got to rotate over there. Nice adjustment by Greg Marshall where to attack that zone. Five threes for Frankamp and a season high 17 points. He's been great. King McClure. And the rebound falls to Frank Camp and the Shockers. Boy, if you're a Wichita State, go right back to that same set. Keep running people down and attacking down there on the baseline. Austin Reeves got a set up. Frank Camp off on that one. Hustling, Nurser tips it out of bounds. 
Hawks. It stays with Wichita State. A minute 54 to play, but we're inside the last two minutes, so they can go to the monitor to make sure the call is correct. Yeah, I like this rule, being able to go look at it. It's off two players, and well, I don't know. I think Nurser it went did off it. Nurser, yeah. but I can't say it for sure. Well, the call on the floor is Wichita State's ball, so there's got to be enough visual evidence to overturn that call. And well, that's close. It's clear Nurser hit it, Reed, but yeah. then did it did hit it Tristan off. Clark yeah. before it went out of bounds? No, I think that's the right. I don't know that that's the right call, but based upon the initial call, that's the correct. There's not enough to overturn it, and uh, John Higgins was very confident. He called it immediately. Let's look one more time. And it may have hit yeah, Clark. Yeah, I think that's the right or, call. Rather, not Clark, but McClure on its yeah, way out of bounds. Yeah, I think that's the right call. So if we were doing football, call stands. <laughs> I wouldn't say confirm, but I'd say it stands. I, I feel confident with that. It's on Luol Atchewil, his fourth, with a minute 38 to go, and Rashard Kelly will head to the line. Oh, Connor Frankham, watch where he comes from, running all the way down the baseline. Oh, you, can't the you can't take away the wing here and guard Connor Frankham down there. And after the basket, watch Lindsay, he sticks his hands up as Pond said, where's my back? Somebody's got to be over here. One and one for Kelly. And the 80% foul shooter. Puts Wichita State up four. You know, Greg Marshall, just the luxury of having a team that shoots 79% as a team from the free throw line. And the senior at the line. Five point game. It makes it difficult to come back against Wichita State as well because they shoot it so well. And they all do. Well, you know, everybody on the floor. for three, way off. And Wichita State with the ball inside a minute 15 to go up five. It's so familiar, look at everybody's arms down by their side. That's a sign of a tired team, You're not taking away those passing lanes. As we, his arms down. as we highlighted, they're short on numbers. Shamit missing a three. The wall actually the rebound. Pull up. And the floater is an air ball from Lacan. And it's pulled down by Rondo Nurser. And now Baylor has to foul. Well, you can't foul Shamit. 94% free throw shooter. But who are you going to foul? That's the question. Everybody shoots 80% on the floor. And Luol Achuel has just fouled out with 23.4 to play. <laughs> Terrific second half for Joe Luol Achuel. 13 points all since halftime. Well, you made the point right before that last possession when everybody shoots the ball so well from the free throw line. If you're Baylor, who is it that you say, you know, the coaches have to go, foul him. <laughs> Instead, they're going, no, 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 Scott's going, don't foul him. Wait, 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 don't foul him. And at the time, There's nowhere the to turn. Were, yeah, that's right. And it's a one and one, the ninth team foul, and Kelly back to the line where he's two of two. Wichita State trying to end that streak, that impressive run that Baylor has had here at home, but Kelly misses. Lacombe. Good defense. Omont for three. And the rebound secured by Austin Reeves, and he is fouled with 12.9 to play by Jake Lindsay. Yeah, that was terrific transition defense. Manu Lacombe was looking for a pull-up three in transition. Greg Marshall's team closed out on him and made him get out. Watch the whole possession. Watch him come down. He's looking to pull the trigger. Transition defense right there. That's Shane. Look how far he's extended. They get the ball out of his hands. That's actually James Jones. Who's that that closed out on him? Yeah, that was Shannon. That really good transition defense. And also a recognition. That scouting report. Knowing what LeConte's looking for. 
One more for Austin Reeves. Seven point game. Deflected out by Richard Kelly with 6.2 seconds to play. Number eight, Wichita State, the best road team in college basketball since the start of 2013-2014 season will come to Waco and end Baylor's 46th game, home court, non-conference winning streak. And the Shockers knock off shorthanded number 16, Baylor, 69-62. And we just got to watch a really good college basketball game. And uh, both these teams playing so well. And Scott Drew's shorthanded team. But I'll tell you something, the Shockers are for real. Greg Marshall and Wichita State, the huge road win in Waco. My partner, Reed Geddes and Brooke Weisbrod. I'm Roxy Bernstein saying so long from Waco, Texas. Again, the final. Number eight, Wichita State, 69. Number 16, Baylor, 62. Coming up next on ESPNU, the Sports Center featured miraculous.